been pushing so very hard. Naichi he shows himself, so not going to be a lane gank at all. He just helps push back the lane, I guess. Yeah, we're going to see that Reginald going to keep trying to hold mid, but blue buff Kennen spamming pretty mm. hard here. And I think they have the timer on the blue. It, blue should be about a minute and a half away still, because uh, they got it around 13 minutes-ish. Um, uh, but that could be a, a, a pretty big uh, priority around the same time as Dragon, actually, which will be interesting. Yep, that will be the next big fight if TSM, so you know, if M5 even have the timing. You see, I'm so used to M5 picking up all the buffs that I assumed they had Dragon, but of course it was TSM who picked up that first Dragon with M5 just not in position. They did have a ward there, so they should have the timer for that Dragon. And that should be the trigger for the next bigger fight. And it looks like in bottom lane they, they want to at least either chip one of them down to low health or take the third or get some other form of advantage that will make the dragon fight easier for them right now. Yeah, but you can see the odd one has oracles now, so he's going to start ward sweeping for his team. Look over at Diamonds, and uh, he does not, though they did just drop a pink ward down at Dragon, so they do know about that coming up very soon, just 30 seconds away. These teams are going to start grouping up and getting ready for that kind of fight. Another pink ward actually just was grabbed here by Johnny, you can see her walking out from the base. Uh, and is kind of relying on 1,500 health, which doesn't really suck, actually. And see if the rest of the team can make this effort happen. Cogmo really wanted to have maximum power right now. We saw him go back to base, buy a pickaxe to go along with his uh, uh, BF sword. And then he waited a little bit and bought an additional Doran's Blade, because he just wants to have all his money invested into power right now, because in that next fight, every little bit of uh, damage could help. And we actually have a pause going down here right now, so not entirely sure what's going on. I don't see anything in the chat at the moment. I'm, I'm sure that uh, an admin is going to tell us very soon what's happening. It may be some uh, further, further case of, of hardware issues. We had that before, unfortunately, with M5 versus Curse, where I yeah. think they had to swap out some hardware. So uh, actually, the game's already been unpaused. Play oh. will resume. So All right. that was easy. Not too bad. Okay, that fair was enough. not too bad. Game on. No uh, one died. And we still got, uh, actually, Moscow 5 grouping up towards the Dragon right now. And they're just jumping into it right away. And Solomon not even making a move to stop them. They're like, yeah, you, you got That's us. interesting because, yeah, like I said, uh, Chaos just invested all that money into maximum efficiency right now, and then they do nothing with it. I think they were just caught out of position there. Yeah, Raymond got some turret pressure up at the top. I mean, you know they would have had to call it. They got the last dragon kill. You know they would have timed that and said, hey, guys, it's going to be in 30 seconds. It's going to be soon. It's going to be soon. Uh, never mind. Um, <laughs> I, you know, I would have hoped for Sula mid sake that Rayman was a little bit uh, more deadly and actually picked up the turret kill for it. See, that's going to be that's not going to be the case here. But oftentimes you'll see, uh, you know, if a team sends all five members down, especially if their solo top does not have teleport, they'll send everyone um, or, or at least, you know, one of the two members mm -hmm. uh, just to, to top and just go, go for a turret kill. Uh, and, and just let those sort of equalize. And the gold values are not far apart there. It's not too bad to do that. Uh, but Moscow 5 are getting an unanswered um, dragon. In addition to two turret kills now, are up almost 2,000 gold. Mm. This is a game where Solo Mid started out with a 2 to 1 first blood kill plus dragon. Moscow 5 was like, oh, you got an advantage? Doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. <laughs> it doesn't matter at all. Not one bit. Ash is going for the BF sword after seal, so there's not going to be a lantern in that build. You were right, after all, she is going to go for that Infinity Edge. Infinity Edge, also the target on Kogmo. He has the Vampiric Sept. He's just going to keep that in his um, inventory until a very late game, when he will probably turn to a Bloodthirster. It's just nice to have that little bit of life steal just for the sustain. And maybe, maybe it'll be just a, that one little factor that'll keep you alive in a team fight. And that's nice too. Not dying is pretty good. I speak from experience. Yeah. Experience of not dying? Yeah. That surprises me. In life, in real life. Not in the game. Oh, okay. Game. Yeah, okay, fair enough. I mean, death is the best CC, so you yes. never know. Pretty much. It's like some more farming going out from Ken and Moscow 5 really just gearing up for, for gold income right now. I gotta like their build though. So they got the, the Devil of the Ancients, as you mentioned earlier, mm -hmm. right? The, the, the AP stack there from Mill of the Ancients. The other cool thing is they've also got this Kennen rushing for what might be an Abyssal Scepter. So you grab the very, very fast Negatron Cloak here. And, and if I'm guessing right, he's gonna go Abyssal Scepter and lower the magic resist even further the enemy team so that he and Vladimir can deal even more damage. And you look at them, and they both went Sorcerer's Shoes, so they really are mm -hmm. kind of gearing for, for just straight-up burst damage. Very, very AoE heavy as well. Vladimir Kennen, their, uh, their, their ults synergize quite well. And tell me this, on support, I know that normally the discussion is do you go two gold per 10 items or three gold per 10 items? Like on Sona Soraka, do you build a cage as Lucky Pick or not? And it looks like this Janna 
literally just needs the Heart of Gold because she just built a Kindle Gem next, so she's not even going to turn the Fairy Charm into a Philosopher's Stone. Yeah. Does that make sense? No, she, I mean, she wants the, the Shirelia's Reverie and wants as much durability as possible, and it's actually, uh, this, this is a very pervasive play style for the Moscow Five players, uh, and a lot of these EU supports as well, is they're actually running, you know, armor, armor, magic resist, flat health for runes, and not, like, armor, gold pretend, armor, gold pretend. Mm -hmm. uh, so they're very much interested in being tanky and being in those fights, and it's actually pretty telling the way they sort of play these games is very in your face, very battle-oriented, and honestly, a Janna with, with HP coins is going to fight better than a Janna with um, gold for 10 coins, and, mm -hmm. and that's kind of what they're going for here. That is true, absolutely. Uh, you want to blow up a... What? Really? 21-minute Baron right now, off of no advantage? That is a very, very ballsy play right there, and they kind of baited Raymond in, and the flash from Alex H, but unfortunately Raymond flashes as well, but the Ash Arrow catches him, and that should be a dead really right there. No! Yes, sorry, I thought he got away there for a second, and well done on M5. That was another dragon fight force. It wasn't even the fight. It was just baiting uh, Raymond out a little bit too far and then going on him so very, very aggressively. Yeah, this is a tactic that Moscow 5 has used many times, which is go for an objective you don't expect to get. You just do it to enforce a fight and say, we know our positioning, we know our team fight strategy is better than yours. And it's worked out here, as it, and it's worked out many times before. Reginald does bait, actually, that Vladimir ult out. Does get away from the fight. They've stopped Baron so far. Alex taking a bit of damage here. Special could lead in with a slow, but might be a silly mistake to do that. Alex taking some damage, looks like. Yep, uh, so a going to be okay just to chill and hide towards the back. Mm. Reginald there had to use his ultimate as well as soon as the Vlad ultimate came up. But I think he was happy enough to use the ultimate just to stay safe because everything TSM wanted to do there was just keep them from doing Baron, obviously, and not die more. That that was another kill pickup for Moscow 5, who now have a uh, 1.5k gold advantage. Yep, and they're, they are just growing this lead, um, and, and that's just really, really awesome for them. Uh, but 1,500 gold when both teams have about 30,000 is not mm. a significant, uh, you know, push in your favor. They are technically winning, but this is really, really open to any team to grab this one. It really can't go either way. And you can kind of just see that they're playing super cautiously, Solomon especially, um, except for Rayman getting cowered there, which I think was just, honestly, just a little bit too much overextension. Um, you know, generally speaking, Solomon are doing a very good job of not getting caught out by the aggressive play of Moscow 5. And that was definitely the debate there, to just hope that maybe one of them would step out a little bit too far. Raymond wanted to go in there right now, right away, and just be a threat. And he didn't expect, I think, Alex to flash on him. He had his flash up as well, but it just wasn't quite enough there. Um, this is looking, though, I think it's looking very good for M5 because just inherently their comp just works so much better for an all-out team fight. You have the Vladimir ultimate, Ken ultimate on top of that, and then you have both Lee Sin and Ash who can clean up very, very nicely after, after all of that is, is done and with the double voter. If, they, if the two mages just survive that initial fight of the team fight, face of the team fight, when, when there's not that many uh, enemies left, they will just out sustain even that very tanky setup from TSM. Whereas TSM are pretty much all about just poking maybe with uh, Reginald and then having Chaos do lots and lots of damage with his uh, Cogmore, but that isn't really happening quite yet. Dragon's gonna be really, really soon here. They're actually grouping up. They've already pink boarded it. There's the spawn, and immediately Diamond, Alex, and wow. Darian are going for it. So Lamid not controlling this at all. They don't actually have. They do have clear points. They just pop that down. You see, they're going for it. They're gonna know the respawn. 30-55. Uh, and they're gonna they're gonna posture for Baron here. I don't think they can get it in time though. They know it's dead. They know the team's mm. moving back over. I think they're just sweeping wards and actually waiting in the brush here. They're trying to bait the enemy team. They're trying to bait M5 into coming there and they getting have a team points, fight. Though. Yeah, and, and Cannon was just there with Vladimir, so you don't want to stand that near, that, that close together, especially in a, in a con constricted oh, yeah. space like that against yeah. these two Altis. Yeah, so that was a somewhat risky move, and they did abort there and just fall back into their own forest. And you're going to see that this Moscow 5 team still have not bought Oracles. They're just relying on pink wards everywhere. You can see they've got a number of them across the map, uh, and they're sweeping wards that way. Uh, but you, you got to you know, think for solo mid, if Ogma could just get to those pink wards, I mean, they're, they're investing 125 gold in each pink ward. Yeah. And this Oracles, at this point, has probably paid off for itself. He's probably swept enough wards that those are pretty much an efficient buy. At least in the amount of money that it cost the enemy team. Probably he didn't yeah. earn back the, the cost in 25 uh, G gold instances quite yet. I don't but think yeah. he's killed 16 wards now. Yes, no. Wow, that was quick math there. Well done. Thank you. Um, yeah, in mid lane we see Alex pushing forward a little bit. 
there doesn't seem to be um, one specific uh, strategy that M5 are doing right now. They're just farming up still. They're, I think they're probably waiting for the next big objective to spawn, and that may be an objective in TSM's forest, where they may want to force a fight right now. I'm not sure if they have the timer on the enemy blue, but Ari, as a very spammy sort of a pokey AP champion, does a lot better with the blue. And they may want to take that away, or they may just want to siege in mid lane. Yep, and there's the oh. Ashen Arrow going down, Reginald. That's the ideal catch right there. Vladimir Altman is down him. It may actually be enough once the triggers. Let's see if he survives. No, it, it does not. And uh, M5, uh, Alex is actually picking up another kill there for himself. Nunu is going down as well. Altman has to flash out. He's very, very low on his turret and picked up by Darian. Everybody is still alive and pretty healthy from M5. Perfect, perfect Team 5 Freak. What happened there for TSM? Well, they landed an amazing, amazing Ash Arrow that opened it up. They pretty much just destroyed Reginald. And honestly, Reginald has not been nearly as scary as Kennen and Vladimir. And so, you know, when he's not able to really get in there and be a big assassin and jump on anyone, they kind of just got to run in there and just deal a whole heck of a lot of damage. Kennen and Vlad just jumped in there hit really, really hard, and then, you know, the, because the front line died so fast for Sola mid, Kog'Maw couldn't be that big damage threat. Oh. Actually, now, in trying to stop Baron, taking a fair amount of damage, there's the yeah. Baron blown up. It's going to be a 34-30 respawn on that. Okay, did a good job of getting away from that, thanks to the stun from the Rain Man, but, yeah, there, this is not looking good for Sola mid anymore. Yeah, that would mean that they would be, um, they would be 1-2 in their group, wouldn't they? Yeah, they one against 1-1 one one so far. Yeah, yeah. That is definitely not something that anyone expected TSM to do here. I mean, even even for me, people always say I have a have a bias for Europe, which is totally not true. Um, even I expected that TSM would just you know probably go 4-1 or something in their group. They they looked really really strong going into this, and and five are still playing their own kind of game. And if we just look at the top and mid lane of M5. Like you said very early on, both with the Sorg shoes, they're just all out offensive. I mean, yeah, there is the uh, Abyssal Scepter from Cannon. Yeah, there is the uh, passive from Vlad that gives him a little bit of extra health. But still, this is a super aggressive setup, and uh, it, they're just making it work for them because they just connect those ultis perfectly and get enough kill pickups that TSM don't have to burst anymore to take any one of these mages out. And if you don't have to burst to take a dual AP, dual Vota setup out, then they're just going to be a real pain to deal with. Yep, absolutely the case here. And, you know, again, this dual AP, it, it's fine, you know, for, for Solomon to fight against because they've got Kogma and Kogma probably the most well-equipped champion to destroy Vladimir. Vladimir, look at him, he's got 26, mm -hmm. 2700 health and, and no MR except for an Ages of the Legion on his team. Like, this is like the perfect champion for a Kogma to melt. And they cannot protect Chaos well enough. Everyone else is dying too quickly. Mm, yeah. And I don't know if it's down to KX positioning or just the, the team not being strong enough right now to get in M5 face and saying, you stay away from our Kog'Maw. Um, I've not actually seen KX in this position, so he seems to be playing a good game, but it's just not going in TSM favor enough. There is a strong gold lead right now for M5 and the Diamond trying to get that resonating strike uh, across the uh, wall. What was the first half of it called? Sonic Wave. Sonic Wave, there we go. Sonic, Sonic Wave. Trying to get a Sonic Wave there across the wall. And oh. there's the Ash Arrow down on Nunu right now. Alex is going in with his ultimate immediately. Nunu blocking the Shirelli. It's not going to save himself. And Reginald actually getting a stun there on himself as well. But he used his ultimate so he can jump two more times. Diamond actually going down to Chaos. Finally a kill there for Kokmo. Rainman very, very low. Picked up very, very quickly by Darian as well, who is having a great game right now. And Alex is still chasing down on Reginald. Actually kid, picking him up. And Chaos is chased out. Out of his own base, worst feeling in the world. Alexis is going to go down to the passive there, <laughs> and that's 500 gold, so that's nice, but you just got chased out of your own base and killed. Yep, and again, this team just so good at dealing damage. You saw Darian kind of get in there under the turret, and when he finally came out of Blood Pool, uh, Kog'Maw's Bioarchan Barrage had ended, that the timer was gone, so he was not able to spit out so much damage anymore. He did a good job melting that first kill. He got the kill onto that Lee Sin right away. He did fall pretty quickly, but no one else was left after that. It was pretty much like, okay, well now it's a 4v1, so sorry, Kog'Maw, but it's not going to work for you. It doesn't look like TSM can defend this, so it looks like M5 once again victorious against TSM. Let's hear it for the Russians from M5. <laughs> and there we see them sitting right now, looking rather intense, considering they just won such a strong game. But I see a hit.